elections run both the government and the economy. We discussed the huge influx of dark money that doesn't even have to be disclosed and how that has increased since the Citizens United decision. Although Measure C, which won on uh, Tuesday, is going to go a long way to alleviating that. So we've got to make that message go nationwide. We examined how most of the government agencies who are supposed to regulate these corporations have been captured by them. It's called regulatory capture. And we discussed the Koch brothers. Charles and David Koch combined are the fourth largest richest person in the United States. In one of the worst economic downturns since the Great Depression, they have almost doubled their net worth to a combined $68 billion. They run the second largest private country in the United States, Coke Industries, with an estimated $100 billion in sales. In industries ranging from oil and gas, refining and chemicals, minerals, fertilizers, forestry, consumer products, polymers and fibers, and ranching. Coke Industries and its subsidiaries have operations in 45 states and a presence in 60 countries. They joked that they are the largest private company no one's ever heard of, and they like it that way. They are also, as we've heard, extreme right-wing ideologues. ...comments to their effect on the environment. I'm not going to discuss how their country is the country's fourth largest polluter and the largest contributor to climate change denial, contributing even more than ExxonMobil, the American Petroleum Institute, and other donors. In the last 10 years, because of all the money they're spending on this climate change denial, fewer people in the country, when polled, actually think that climate change is real and that humans are causing it. That's how insidious their, in their, uh, their influence is. They also own companies which run lumber mills, produce chemicals, and manufacture fertilizer. So they oppose efforts to protect public health by regulating those substances. They oppose efforts to cut harmful carbon emissions. The head of Americans for Prosperity, one of their uh, front groups with one of those lovely sounding names, who could be against Americans for Prosperity after all, uh, co-authored an op-ed with the chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee detailing how Congress could stop the Environmental Protection Agency from ensuring a cleaner environment. What kind of newspaper would publish that kind of editorial? Oh, I know, the Koch Brothers Times. One of the Koch subsidiaries, Georgia Pacific, which produces 2.2 billion pounds of formaldehyde a year, has urged lawmakers not to consider formaldehyde a human carcinogen. And David Koch himself is a prostate cancer survivor. The brothers are the single largest oil and gas donor to members of the influential House Energy and Commerce Committee. Our representative, Henry Waxman, noticed the, noted the Koch influence over the Republican Party, saying, quote, it apparently no, ma no longer matters in Congress what health experts and scientists think. All that seems to matter is what Koch Industries thinks. Yeah, we are here to protest the Koch brothers uh, trying to buy out LA Times. And what else would you like to know? Like why we are protesting and why we are concerned is because uh, this is basically an attack on the freedom of press and uh, the general population uh, basically uh, gets its information from newspapers like LA Times. Koch brothers have tried to silence the common worker's voice before and this is just yet another attack to silence uh, information, to silence the voice of the 99% of Californians who are the working class. We're here to support the cause of not selling the LA Times to the Cox brothers. Demonstrating against the uh, Koch brothers trying to buy out uh, the LA Times and uh, the Chicago Sun and all the other newspapers that they want to get a hold of. Then what do you want? What do I want? Oh, well, the Coke Brothers to go to hell. I'm here because I really think that the Coke Brothers buying the LA Times is, uh, I've lived here half a century, more than that, and I, uh, the thought that they would infiltrate our public consciousness with their um, hatred of the planet, really. I mean, or I should say that they 
That was what was so shocking about their greed. It was at planetary expense. I mean, it wasn't the greed per se, because people generally with a huge amount of money are greedy. I mean, it's but at the expense of the planet. And and they're, uh, you know, their uh, cavalier attitude about that. I, and then the thing that they would try to, or will perhaps, buy the LA Times, that's all. I want a free press. I want a press that uh, would model what the um, founding fathers wanted in a press. That was a, an independent uh, group of people that would inform the nation. I want it not to be owned by any special interests, so it has to be broad. Uh, I don't want a monopoly of who owns it, so Rupert Murdoch should be broken up. And his, his uh, company should also be broken up. Uh, for a lot of other reasons, I think the Koch brothers should be prosecuted for a lot of things, including treason and uh, including uh, murder because their pollution has caused death and the uh, deaths that they have caused are, have been in the search of profit. And uh, in Texas, you know, uh, murder for profit is a special case where they do apply the death penalty. I only want them in jail. All right. As principal funders of ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council, which many of us note as a force of evil in our society. The Koch brothers peddled the creation of the Animal and Ecological Terrorism Act, which contained rhetoric so overwrought that it bordered on parody. It sought to make filming an, a farm an act akin to bombing at the Boston Massacre. The guilty would be placed on a terrorist registry Brought to you by Mr. and Mrs. Co Mr. and Mr. Coke. Look, we cannot allow this to happen. What will happen to those voices of conscience, the Dr. Kings and Reverend Lawsons, or for that matter, the voices of elected leaders whom the Coke brothers simply don't like? They will be silenced in the LA Times. The pain and suffering of the multitudes will potentially get no coverage. Do you hear how how dreaded that is? Can you even imagine? And before long, there will be attacks on labor renewed, and we'll see a return to the kind of abuses that characterized the worker community a hundred years ago. We'll be brought back in time in a very ugly way. I know that the rabbis and advisors of Ruth Karsh must struggle with the potential death of our culture that will also ensue if he and his community of investors sell the newspaper to the Koch brothers. How can they not? Perhaps they will remind Mr. Karsh that the end of the LA Times as we know it potentially means the end of the cultural diversity that Jews have thrived in in this country within the United States. The end of the LA Times as we know it potentially means that Jews African Americans, Latinos, and other minorities will lose the freedom of the press that has made this country great as a protector of the most vulnerable and minority groups in general. An end of the LA Times, as we know it, potentially means an editorial board that supports the proliferation of guns in our society, which contradicts the religious community's passion for protecting life. The end of the LA Times, as we know it, potentially means the decimation of the rights of women, the poisoning of our air and soil, the open encouragement of environmental injustice, and virtually everything that Jewish tradition opposes. And as one article that was sent to me points out, the Koch brothers' grandfather, Harry Karsh, Co Co Harry Koch, actually did the exact same thing back in the era of the railroad proliferation construction. He used his newspaper to destroy communities left and right, manipulating the media with racist statements and out, outright lies in order to make the Koch brothers rich two generations later. This is not a pair of brothers who raise themselves out of you know poverty and, and have a success story of their own. They inherited a great deal of money 
and it's in that context that they are decimating our planet. We're here because we believe in freedom of the press and that, you know, along uh, the lines of, of uh, our constitutional fathers who, who wrote the Constitution, gave a place for a free press as the fourth estate. Uh, you cannot have democracy without an informed population. And uh, if the Koch brothers buy the LA Times, uh, the community will not be informed except for, uh, except about the Koch brothers agenda which is pretty much a corporate fascist agenda. Um, as, you, as I'm sure you know, the Koch brothers are among probably the top five wealthiest uh, people in the country. And, um, you know, they don't care at all about the common good. They don't care at all about uh, the community. They just want to make more money and uh, bring people around to their point of view, which they will do through uh, buying the Tribune system, in it, you know, which includes the LA Times. And we don't want that to happen. So we want we want the person to uh, who's going to make the decision. Uh, hopefully, will be moved by response against the Koch brothers, because ultimately, guess what? If the Koch brothers buy the Times and try to put forth their agenda, it'll probably go out of business. Because historically, if newspapers do not um, represent the community, and LA is the largest, has the largest uh, diversity, uh, the most diverse city probably in the world. Um, they will go out of business. So I suppose there will be a silver lining if they do buy it. They'll lose some money. with a big shout out to my partner, Medea Benjamin, yeah. for disrupting Obama today for five minutes to talk about bringing, letting the prisoners that are innocent go free from Guantanamo and to really highlight the costs of our drone strikes across the world. So a big round of applause for Medea because everybody behaves what you should know is shocked that anybody would do that in an Obama speech and we should be doing it more which means I want to thank everyone for being out here it's all about using our voices so this is the beginning so we start we march we go but it means you go back and you tell everybody you know to use their voice in some way to tweet it to Facebook it to build a pressure against the, the Koch brothers here in LA and we're from LA I mean, look, we just had a mayor's race, which was about grassroots activism versus, versus the money power, and who won? Grassroots. Yeah. So we know this is not the place where the 1% of the 1% of the 1% of the 1% gets to come in and take over. Because Jefferson said he would rather have a newspaper than the government. And if, we, if the newspaper sells out, we don't have anything. We don't have democracy. And as we say, the Koch brothers are toxic to U.S. democracy. Um, I was arrested in Palm Springs. My worst arrest ever was an arrest by the Koch brothers. It was disgusting. So they don't, they take no prisoners. We can't let them in. We have to continue to use our voices. We have to spread the word about who they are and what they do. And talk to your friends in Wisconsin if you want to know what that looks like. So, you know, let's show Wisconsin that we can gather together, that we can build the momentum, we can build the steam up, spread the word, stay engaged. Because every time we come together to push back against, you know, the 1%, the corporations, we build that muscle. So let's keep building the muscle. We're going to need it. Um, they keep getting, you know, more money and we want to keep building our grassroots activism. So thank you so much. And thank you, Lauren, for your leadership. Okay, well, our final speaker was supposed to be felonious acts from the billionaires. He just came back from the Koch Brothers annual confab that was two weeks ago in Palm Springs. But he is under the weather, so instead, we have his fellow billionaire, Roland Indo. And here he is. In the interest of uh, uh, good American transparency, I'm here to present the point of view of the billionaires, the one percent of the one percent, <laughs> the most discriminated group uh, in America today. And uh, oh, excuse me. 
Uh, yes, I'm presenting uh, the point of view of uh, the billionaires, the one percent of the one percent. We are, uh, we have the smallest voice, and yet, you know, uh, if corporations are people, then we are too. So I'm here to present the Koch brothers' side of the purchase of the LA Times. To begin with, thank you so much for making time in your program for me to address your concerns about Coke Industries' plan to expand into the newspaper business. Remember, this is not only the LA Times up for sale, but the Chicago Tribune, the Baltimore Sun, the Orlando Sentinel, and the Hartford Current as well. And the deal includes more than 20 TV stations, including LA's KTLA 5 and uh, WGN in Chicago. That's a whole lot of influence being peddled for a bargain price. And who doesn't like a bargain? It's as American as unmanned drones. <laughs> I've heard that if we take over the times, half the employees will quit. Sweet! That will certainly include the 30% of the employees who belong to unions. That alone will save us millions and will go a long way towards restoring the paper to profitability. And let's face it, the Times has been hemorrhaging dollars for years, but we don't see this as a question of profits. We intend to invest and re revitalize the paper. All we ask for is a, a little bit of editorial control, maybe a few columns supporting the Keystone Pipeline and a handful of our hand-picked candidates, or some discount coupons for assault rifles with oversized magazines, and a couple of Sarah Palin's favorite moose burger recipes. It, it hurts me when people think of us as corporate titans bent on crushing or acquiring everything in our path. I invite you to see us instead as philanthropists who, generally, who generously donate to our many pet causes, like the New York City Ballet, which will be presenting next season an all-dance version of Atlas Shrugged. <laughs> Doesn't it just get you right here? We understand that newspapers are a public trust, but you must trust us to keep the public's best interests in mind. After the elected officials we put in office cut off funding to public television, we donated a ton of money to PBS. And in return, they were nice enough not to screen a documentary, documentary that was critical of all that we do. That was lovely of them, wasn't it? In conclusion, we realize that newspapers represent the voices of their communities. We just want to help all those voices to sing in tune. Our tune. Thank you very much. That's what we all want to be, right? We want to get a more fair economy. The Pew, um, the Pew study recently showed that in the last three years since the Great Recession started, the top, um, what was that figure? The top 7% uh, increased their wealth by 7% and the bottom 93 decreased their wealth by 4%. Something like that. Maybe the increased percentage was high. Anyway, let's put it this way. It wasn't fair, and, you know, we've seen that they've recovered, and, um, and the rest of us haven't. doorstep and they're going to have a bake sale to sh try to symbolize what's going to happen with senior citizens if the Koch brothers get a hold of the papers they're going to have to actually be uh, you know holding bake sales because they're going to abolish the Koch brothers are going to make sure that social security is abolished so we're going to go to this busy corner where a lot of his neighbors have to Bruce Karsh and his neighbors all have to turn on this corner to 
get to their houses when they come home from work, and hopefully they will see that it is their neighbor, Bruce Karsh, an otherwise philanthropic, civic-minded citizen who has the power to do this dirty deed. I do not want the Koch brothers taking over the Los Angeles Times. We've got to keep the cocaine out of Los Angeles, so that's why I'm here. I'm here to support a free press. That's it. Here to support free press, free speech, um, and keep our news local. I'm here to hope that the Koch brothers don't try to do to the LA Times what they tried to do to the Republican convention. I want to keep things free and legitimate. Oh, I'm here for this. So Bruce yeah. Parch doesn't sell the LA Times to the Koch brothers. No good can come from that. That's right. And we're getting some people to honk. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.